let's talk about it. Welcome back to Thick Radio, the podcast where we talk about gaining, feedism, and everything in their orbit. I'm James. And I'm Tim, so let's get into it. Today we're welcoming to the show for the first time. Today we've got a good friend, April. Hello. Hi, April. How are you doing, doll? I'm pretty good. How are you guys doing? Doing good. Doing good, my love. Well, listen, we're doing all the better now that you're here, and today is going to be fan fucking tastic because dear listeners you don't know this yet and we're going to get into it today but april reached out to us via the email which is proof that the emails work reach out to us at the thick radio at gmail.com um but april reached out to us because april is in fact a very rare creature indeed i feel like i should have done this intro in full david attenborough (laughs) you know? <laughs> here today we have the rarest creature in the fetus uh, uh what is it like, like the jungle of, of fetism we have the very rare unicorn the female fat admirer gorgeous round of applause oh thank you oh my gosh the, here i am in the woods here you are just walking like a a graceful gazelle you just stepped into the glade that perfect beam of light shining on you you look fantastic and that's what we're talking about today the very unique experience of being a female fat admirer so listen april you ready to get into it babes i'm absolutely let's do it fabulous well listen give us a little bit of the backstory to start like how did you first come to get a love and an appreciation for fat yeah so I feel like from a very young age I was always kind of knew I was fascinated by fat and um even before it was sexual I was just kind of obsessed with it um and I didn't really understand it until I was getting a little bit older and um And then I, you know, my first thought was like, oh, I'm a lesbian when I was 10, because I came across uh, BBW and SSBBW videos um, and the early days of the internet. Well, I'm not that old, but like the early 2000s, (laughs) the 2000s were quite a wild time. Um, And and then I realized, oh, shoot, I'm not just attracted to SSBBWs. I'm attracted to all fat people. Okay, Um, so that was kind of. Um, a learning development and I think like a lot of us um, growing up I tried to push it away because it was taboo it was not cool to be into fat people Um, so yeah I was I will say in the fridge um, growing up and in my teen years and kind of just dated very you know average people Um, and it wasn't until my mid-20s I kind of fully accepted that so yeah um I identify I guess as like you could call me bisexual really I identify more with fat sexual because I'm attracted to all fat people I don't care what the gender is love that and I mean for people who may not be aware and and, you know sometimes I kind of forget like what do people know what do people not know I know we made the joke before that you're a unicorn the rarest creature in all of fetidom however we want to describe this like what is the context for people who may not know what is the context of that statement so i think people consider it less common and i don't know if it's just visibility or if it's actually less common i think it's maybe a bit of both um because i noticed kind of growing up there wasn't a lot of stuff geared for female fat admirers there's like the gainer community which is mostly gay men there's like some ladies may be hanging on the outskirts but it's not you know primarily that and then there's a big like cis hetero community of like male feeders and female feedies and I remember kind of entering you know entering the world of like online and porn and sex workers and just like I mean online stuff um and it was kind of weird because I'm like well I like these big ladies but I like these big dudes and I like encouraging Um, but I didn't really feel like I felt in like, um, like a super community. 
Um, but kind of over the years, I've realized, you know, I'm just part of the like larger um, fat admiration community, I guess you could call it. Um, so yeah, it's kind of where I was going with that. It's a little bit less common. I remember um, there was this like survey online um, I forget who it was by, but it was saying like one in 17 men may be a fat admirer, whereas one in 100 women are a fat admirer. I don't know if you guys saw that little like survey thing. No idea if that's true. It's, it was only a sample of like 7,000 people. So, but anyway, I'm rambling. <laughs> no, no, you're, you're fine. I mean, this, honestly, this, this kind of perspective is so fascinating because ultimately we haven't had other people try to approach us about it. And wherein that conversation tends to go, people don't really know where to go. Like if you asked someone like, who's an iconic gainer that you could name? Who's an iconic feedy, an iconic feeder? Like you can probably think of a few key people, but if I was to ask anyone in general, like who is an iconic female fat admirer? I feel like you just sort of see that glazed over look on someone's yeah, face. Yeah, like, uh... Like, you would name like someone on a TV sitcom with a fat husband or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very, very Leah Remini, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, I feel like I've been carving my own niche into here, but also just connecting with other female fat admirers. And they're out there. They're for sure out there. Um, like Tender Loving Cares. Um, I think she's from Germany. I could be wrong, somewhere in Europe, but um she put out um Horn Green magazine, which was fantastic for uh female fat admirers um love that definitely more gear and definitely more like hetero geared but um wildly enjoyable nevertheless mm. and uh not that we normally call out certain people on the podcast but tender loving cares if you're listening and would like to come on there yeah. is a a seat ready and waiting for you you just you just slide into our dms our emails and we will chat girl yeah. um but no, it, it kind of makes me interested because as you say, you've been kind of carving your own niche because I suppose something maybe we don't, so maybe something we take for granted, Tim, is because the gainer community is so, and I love the jokes, it's so expansive, it's so large. Yeah. You know, there's a framework that we can easily slip into. Newbies can sort of look at it and go, oh, I know how to act. I know what's going to work well in this space. Whereas as a female fat admirer, even though there's probably an expectation for male feedees who are looking for someone like that. You don't know necessarily how you're expected to act, how you feel comfortable to act or engage. I mean, tell me what that process is like in terms of formulating this identity in, in terms of like how you act, but also how that affects how you interact with both men and women. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one thing I was going to say on that is I remember when I was first kind of browsing Instagram and stuff, I did come across some super chubs and I almost felt kind of awkward liking their photos. Cause I was like, well, I am pretty sure they're into men and like, um, some of them are bisexual. So like, you know, it depends on the person, but I'm like, I think, and then I started feeling weird. Cause I'm like, am I encroaching on then, um, the gainer community when I'm like a woman, is that okay? And I started questioning myself, like, is there certain etiquette here? Am I allowed to like these photos? I think, you know, it depends on the person. I think over the years I found most big guys just generally like any admiration of their bodies. Um, just even just like a hell yeah, that's an awesome gut. Like, um, yeah, so that was one aspect. And then I think, yeah, I've definitely found it interesting being bi because on a lot of these forums, it's mostly men that get in my inbox and it gets sexual very quickly with men. Whereas yeah. um, I don't get women on my inbox as much, but interacting with women has generally been a bit more of a pleasant experience because like you get to know each other, you talk about your kinks. Um, I do some more like platonic encouragement just generally. Um, but I have felt a little bit more comfortable with women on the online, in the online spaces. Um, and also just being able to chat and get a sense of, um, community and actually gaining friends online is, has been really awesome. Um, cause I find a lot of men are quick to jump in your DMs and just be like, here's my dick, here's my gut. 
um, you're such a rare species. Obviously you want to be my feeder now. And you're like, Whoa, hold on there. Hold on. Like, uh, like I know you're like, can't we have a cup of coffee first or something? (laughs) Yeah. Like I know you're looking for a female feeder, but like, also I'm in a relationship of nine years and I have a job and I also like, you know, I think I signed into Reddit and I had like 40 messages and I was like, I don't have the time to encourage 40 different people around the world. Like I enjoy it, but don't expect me to get back to you right away. Mm. Um, yeah, it's been an interesting experience online for sure. Some of the men that slide into your DMS, do they ever like not even bother reading your profile and think that you want to be fed instead that like they want you to gain? Yeah, I've definitely had that because it's definitely more common for women to be the feedy, I think, especially in the hetero communities. So I've definitely had that. And I'm like, I mean, I like food, but it's like it's not doing anything for me. Like I don't get off on it. So Mm. um, I don't mind gaining a bit of weight, but it's not like my primary kink. Yeah. So like at some point you might be open to to a sort of mutual gaining, but really the focus is always going to be on the other person be it you know whatever gender they um identify as like that you you want to feed them you want to grow them yeah yeah that's definitely what i like yeah Mm. i think that tracks especially from the feeders we've spoken to you know i don't think it's a sense of i mean i'm I'm sure there are some feeders who are also gainers people have that kind of co-mutual experience but i think it's a little bit like with muscle gainers even though muscle is the primary focus a lot of muscle gainers will basically say, you know, if there's no belly, what are we even doing? Like, yes, we're here for muscle, but like, you have to have some kind of fat. And I imagine it's the same thing for feeders as well. Like, even if you don't have a specific desire to gain, if you're in that space where there's comfort and maybe if you gained some weight or even if you did just get fat, you wouldn't look at it from a kink perspective, but you'd be like, do you know what? I'm in a comfortable situation. This is the result of that comfort. This is not a negative. Yeah, yeah. I th- I think that's definitely, that's definitely what I've noticed too. And I came from like growing up, um, growing up around a lot of fat phobia. I dealt with that. I actually dealt with kind of like an eating disorder in high school. Um, And I've noticed throughout the years that urge to be super thin has kind of just faded and faded and faded. And now I'm like comfortable where I am now. Um, and I think that is part of the community because like, even though I'm not actively trying to gain people in generally are accept like just accepting. Um, and I like, I do like contrast. So I'm like, you know, I like to stay under 200 pounds. So then, you know, if my partner's 300 pounds, you know, that is hot having an extra hundred pounds on me. I think that is what I like, but, um, yeah, I think, you know, everyone likes different things, but the contrast is also sexy. No, I get it. And, you know, it's so interesting you say that because I know we've talked about this point before, you know, Tim and I have both shared with our relationships, our partners, basically in the conversation of being like, oh, by the way, I'm a gainer. <sighs> like, you know, you know, you don't know how that conversation is going to go. Yeah. What was it that Matt said? Like, I'm sorry, what? What, what was what it was that, that Matt said when you told him? Oh. To- oh, no, he was, I mean, he was cool about it because he was already like very entrenched in in like kink community like he had been into bdsm leather all this other stuff so it's not like it was a huge surprise um and he actually i think at some point in that conversation he was i think he said something along the lines of um i kind of saw that for you anyway (laughs) um he sees through you (laughs) yeah uh like he he said he was totally because he he doesn't really go after thin men anyway like he's like i prefer men who have a belly on them or some meat on them or whatever the only thing stipulation he made was um he wasn't into super chubs but i was like i didn't plan on getting that big anyway so yeah Um, you said I know for my partner, like, when we had that conversation, there was sort of that joking moment of, like, well, I'm not going to have to watch what I eat now, which is, like, yeah, you know? And, you know, my partner is not a gainer, but is a chubby guy. He's fine with his body and, you know, has a lot of positive responses from people in crossover communities. And I feel like a lot of what you're saying, it's, like, gaining and feedism have the opportunity to present an op- a way of healing for mm-hmm. civilians who don't want to... Yeah. It's an opportunity to normalize fatness and to provide comfort, um, which is quite a beautiful thing. It's, uh, I don't know, an aspect of what we do that maybe people don't often think about, but is wonderful. Mm -hmm. 
Um, yeah. But I'd, I'd love hearing about, you know, when you say, oh, I'm into that contrast, you know, and it's like, even just the way you said that, it's like, I want to be under 200. So when he's <laughs> 200, and I'm sat here like, oh, you go, you speak my language right there. Just like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just like being crushed by someone 100 pounds more is ideal. So good. So mm. good. Mm. Very I good. apologize if this is going to come off a certain way but it's like i'm just it's it's kind of like mind-blowing because um the way that you, that you're talking about this is the way that like most gay men talk about this you know <laughs> that's and it's the thing. like it's like i know you've made such a like a solid community but i feel like there's so like, like it's just all it's all like overlapping like fetishes i feel like yeah yeah no absolutely i mean we we talked about this briefly uh before when we were sort of first getting to know one another it's like there's often this huge divide created between what is gaining and what is fetist when it's the same shit with different it really, it really sometimes is. and also like does it fucking matter like I, I don't know sometimes i feel like gay men in particular can get really uncomfortable with female sexuality as if gay men created the concept signed the declaration own the rights and the full shares to it and it's like <laughs> everybody's out here with a craving you know what i mean i think that's changing though i like the, the kind of mentality you're talking about james is something that i was very accustomed to because like you know an older millennial gay there was because we had before that was was the gen x gays right and it's like that they they had to grow up in a time where everything was really like segregated like the gay bar was the gay bar you had to go there if you wanted to be safe you had to go to a bathhouse if you wanted to be safe but things have really changed and then with the advent of um <clears throat> queer marriage being legalized uh throughout the united states i it shifted even further and now it's like um i don't i don't i don't think that the current queer generation um is as segregated it's much more blended you know and plus because um sexuality or our perception of sexuality has evolved you know now that we've included all the other labels like pan bi fluid you know all all the uh, descriptors i think people are much more willing to blend than they were when I was out and about in the gay scene. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, to to lean into that for a second here, like how has your comfort in the community shifted over time? Like, do you feel more integrated now with different spaces more than you were back then? Or do you still feel like there's a sort of continuation of one foot in, one foot out? Because maybe people don't provide you a space to feel fully included um yeah it is it is kind of interesting I don't, it's a tough question I don't know um I I feel like I get the most sense of inclusion talking to other female feeders online because when I talk to dudes it's a lot of it just goes right to sexuality and not a lot of community um Sorry, can you repeat the last part of that question? <laughs> That's okay. And ultimately, you know, this is a question I'm curious about. Ultimately, your experiences over time, like over time, have you felt like you've become more included and more ingrained in your sense of community? Or have you not really felt like there's been any progress there? Have you felt like people have deliberately kept you out or made, you, made it feel difficult for you to be more included? Right. I don't think anyone's deliberately kept me out. I think it's just kind of those pre-existing spaces of like, um, you know, you've got gainer culture, you've got uh, hetero feeder feedy culture. And then I have found myself kind of bouncing between the two. Because um, <laughs> I'll, you know, I'll often enjoy videos of like um, a female feeder with a male feedy. I'll enjoy any sort of gainer, any sort of like fat video it doesn't necessarily have to be like feeding related it can be like body worship um and then there's some like um i guess you could say lesbian uh like aimed videos but i honestly find that almost the hardest to find if i'm honest um so yeah i would say i am getting more comfortable though just getting out there and following who i want to follow and you know if you know hopefully they're okay with it sometimes I reach out and be like hey I, I love this photo and most of the time they're okay with it um so yeah I've just kind of had to become more comfortable in the online space and just 
being who I am. And then like also in real life, I'm just uh, getting to the point where um, I used to, if someone's like, are you in a fat people? I would say no. And then nowadays, if someone asks me, honestly, like, yeah, I have nothing to hide. And I think that also, like we were talking about in the, um, in our previous chat session, I think that, and maybe this is a future episode, but I think that also comes from a place of, um, you know, fat liberation and just being more comfortable in general with being like, yeah, I like fat people, whether or whether or not it's a fetish, um, or just a preference. I'll, I'll never forget. Um, so I, I don't know if this is, well, no, this does relate. Um, so after, uh, I broke up with my, uh, husband and I was, um, single and I was out playing the field for the first time in a long time. Um, I was approached by someone that I had known for a couple of years, but someone that I kind of thought would never have been interested in me. Um, and he was, you know, very, um, direct about what he wanted from me. And, <clears throat> uh, I remember we, we went out for a couple of drinks before all of that. And he did say to me, um, he's like, so I've heard, are you into chubby guys? And because my my ex um, loved to slander me after we broke up. But um, I was like, yeah, I, you know, it's it's uh, it, it, it's not my only preference. Like I, I can there's a lot of different types of men that I'm attracted to. And here I was thinking he was going to be like, oh, well, then forget it because you're a weirdo. He didn't give a fuck. He didn't give a yeah. shit. He was he wanted me and so you know we proceeded to do what we did yeah. and I just it was kind of like that moment though where I'm like oh see no one no one gives a shit no one really cares yeah. and like I if they do they... care if they care so much that they want to then cancel their desire for you then why were they pursuing you in the first place yeah yeah and I think we do build up a lot of this weirdness in our own heads and I especially did a lot more when I was younger too of like no one can find out I used to like in my teens like just absolutely have so much anxiety of like oh my god what if I forgot to clear my search history what if someone finds out what if they find out I'm a freak what if they find my videos and I used it used to be such a place of fear and it was like that I think that combined with the whole societal fat phobia it was like you know this whole thing and then the older I get and the more in community I get I'm just like it's you know it's fine I'm not gonna like make some elaborate lie to defend myself anymore like if someone asks me I'll take so I'll, you know I'll be like whatever I like big people they don't know it need to know every every kinky detail um but you know I'm not gonna hide it <laughs> no absolutely we've said this before you don't need to stand atop the building with a loudspeaker and proclaim your desire for you know growth to the high heavens if you don't want to but even something as simple as just holding your ground when people are like oh do you like fat people and you're like yeah i do yeah and like, it's it's so weird because like 10 years ago or 20 years ago it was like the 2000s was so fat phobic if you, you said yeah i like fat people instantly people were like yeah you are a chubby chaser you are wow that is unheard of and now i feel like hopefully we'll get to the point in society where it's like yeah, like fat people, it's not weird. Aren't like 60% of people overweight at least? Like, <laughs> yeah, with the US being one of the fattest nations in the world. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, yeah, people don't need to know all the kinks, but they can certainly know it's a preference for me. And like, it just, it should, you like, you shouldn't be ashamed about it, you know? It's like, and how does, how do fat people feel when, you know, the rest of the world is like, ashamed to admit this preference you know mm, i mean that's a conversation that we've had with a number of people on the program and even just personally speaking you know everyone's got horror stories of you know the fit twink feeder encourager chaser who you just thought god i found that unicorn that one guy who's prepared to love on a big boy and maybe he does know what he's doing but you have to leave out the back door because he'd be mortified if anyone saw someone like you leaving yeah. his house. Like, yeah. when you pull it all back, like, it's it's right there in front of us. And it is a disrespect. It's a disrespect to the people. And it's also a disrespect to ourselves. Like, a kink, again, is one thing. Like, some of us are into that humiliation, teasing. But I don't know, girl. Like, my version of that is I want you to, like, take me clothes shopping and be like, hey, try this shirt on. It looks like a great size for you. And like, I'll go in the changing room and I'm like, 
What do you mean? Uh, my belly's hanging out. Oh, no, no. I, I look ridiculous in this. And then you've snapped a couple of pics, and I'm like, y you know, like, that's that's great. Um, yeah, but yeah. But being like, oh, I'm ashamed to be seen with you <laughs> is not humiliation fetish. That is just uh, a, be <laughs> a beauty. Yeah, that's yeah. just cruel. Yeah, exactly. I feel the same way. Like, um, I feel like my journey in accepting my kink and also journey to like fat liberation and also just like not yeah just like not being fat phobic have been like side by side and I've noticed my habits have changed along with that like you know when I was like young 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 scrolling YouTube I used to you know come to things and then you know it's like the the look of shame after you finish and you're like oh what was I what was I masturbating to oh my god yeah. um but then I think feel like as you you know work on your own acceptance and stuff that doesn't I've had less of that experience as I get older I'm like oh that like when I'm no longer turned on I'm not like that's gross you know I'm like that's hot or at, at the very least like neutral <laughs> you know mm -hmm. um yeah it's like really unfortunate for the the people in this fetish that like will get off to fat stuff and then like be so fat phobic in their day-to-day -day life like that seems really shitty because you're not going to treat a partner well if you're like that yeah and there's and that's like true truly fetishizing without respecting fat people as like the people they are you know 100 percent. honestly i think this is a whole conversation we can visit in a future episode talking about fat lib and all that which yeah would be i'm like i don't know how you've uh marked out marketed out the episodes here so <laughs> <laughs> i might be like delving into multiple so you can feel free to keep me on track no 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 you're totally fine totally totally fine um but i was curious now i know you mentioned before about like um you know different things that you're interested in sexually when it comes to because as you mentioned you have a partner um what do in-person experiences look like for you what do you feel comfortable mm -hmm. doing what are your red flags walk us through that for yourself yeah so uh with my partner um i came out to him i like four months into the relationship um because I was like, I can no longer live a lie. I got to be honest here. I can't lead him on and then later be like, I'm in fat dudes and women. Um, Cause I totally didn't come out to my uh, high school boyfriend at all. And it, you know, sex just wasn't the same, you know, you're just fantasizing in your head, but it's just not the same at all. Um, so yeah, um, with my partner, I kind of, came out to him and he was non-judgmental which was awesome he was like okay okay like I'm not naturally into that but like you know we'll play around with it um and we would kind of you know he started teasing me because I didn't want to like start anything I just wanted to tell him this is what I'm into but like I'm not going to push anything on you but he was actually the one that started teasing me he would like text me and say I've got it I'm eating a bunch of burritos or whatever and I'm like nice okay okay nice um but yeah, so with him, I mean, I feel like there's so much overlap into gaining as well. Like just, um, yeah, food, feeding, nothing hotter than a milkshake in bed. Oh my God. Um, button popping, that's super hot. Trying on old clothes, super hot. I feel like that's like popular in the whole community. Um, and then like teasing I'm sure you're going to do another future episode on this, but like the line between like reality and fantasy. Um, and sometimes I think we can use fantasy to our benefit. Um, like I'm trying to think of an example, like we love to engage in like, um, like I'll make them lots of food, overeating. Um, we'll give them milkshake, stuff like that. Um, but sometimes I am still into like some pretty extreme stuff. Um, like I like to fantasize about immobility, um, but in a day-to-day -day reality, that's just like not, not realistic. And obviously me and my partner have talked about that and agree on that, but it is fun to tease about it. Um, during sex, like teasing, like, um, I'm so full, I can't get up, stuff like that. Um, I think that can really... 
I don't know, fantasy can be of benefit for the things you do not want to go, you know, go to in real life, if that makes sense. And I'm sure you've kind of experienced that too. Yeah, I, I think we all have to some degree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, most definitely. And I mean, in terms of, you know, I guess more specifically meeting up with other people, I, I mean. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're talking about like other people too. Yeah. Like, so genuine question, like, yeah. would you be up for meeting up with other people? And that's not necessarily to say, oh, sex on the table. Um, could be <laughs> joking. No, Um, so it could be. <laughs> <laughs> on the table on the table <laughs> under the surrounded by the food surrounded by the food exactly no yeah. um, um, and, even just like coffee you know yeah and that's i've um i think i've shared on social media like i'm 100 percent open um to meeting up for like um just like just like as friends meeting for coffee talking about community that stuff's great um kind of some more um non-sexual encouraging just like in public encouraging people to eat food I think there's a way to do it that's not sexual um I think to a degree it's inherently sexual because you're like you're like I'm eating food I'm getting turned on um but there is a way to do it more um what what's the word I'm looking for platonically like platonically mm -hmm. feeding I'm a big fan of that and then me and my partner have talked about um like opening our relationship we're currently monogamous um we've definitely talked about it before though and I think he's expressed like well if you want to like do something with a woman one day like I'm fine with that so um haven't got there yet but maybe one day you know life's busy but um be really cool to meet up with a BBW or SSBBW one day mm, absolutely um, yeah um I love what you said about platonic feeding because I feel like I have made my stance here on this podcast very clear. I believe in this 100%. We are so broad when it comes to everything is sex. Everything turns you on. Everything makes you hard. Yes, understood. Got it. Literally does not need to be explained. But what about everything else? What about the fact that I walk around with my gains every single day. I need to do more with this than just jack off. Like there yeah. has to be more to the story. So yeah. something I try to practice with gain of friends, people who come through London, there's always an insistence that we go out to lunch and we go out to a nice enough place. And we always make sure it's the kind of situation where you can order a couple of different plates. I want to fill up that table so that every square inch, I want that server to come over and it's like fucking Tetris, bitch. I want them to be like, shit, you gotta <laughs> fucking stack some shit and move this. And if you're done with that, we'll combine the plates. I want every square inch covered and I want it to be just hands everywhere grabbing food and oh this is delicious you got to try some of that and have a drink of this and oh we got to oh what do you think about this oh and then we got to go to dessert and it's that thing of i am not a feeder by my designation but i want to encourage and find opportunities to facilitate that yeah situation. yeah that i get that facilitating the opportunity for them to feed themselves you know and i think there is also a way to do that even if you don't do uh, big tables like that you could do it where it's like oh maybe we just had a normal lunch but i'm actually going to pay for your lunch and you mm -hmm. go oh no, no, no it's okay it's like don't worry big boy you know i'll, I'll spot you you know and it's, it's like such a like caring vibe like it's so um it's it reminds me of like the italian grandmother vibe of just like oh my god i just yeah. want to encourage food i just want you all well fed because i care about you it doesn't have to be necessarily sexual and i notice that sometimes with my friends like i just like to host and cook for people and it's like part of my identity and not necessarily sexual and so i like when i can do like that sort of um yeah that just sort of like uh feeding people that's not all sexual all the time because you're right it's like gaining it. that's why I feel like for me it's such a fat sexuality and not just a kink is like it's really with you all the time it's the only thing I can get off to and but even besides that like I just like encouraging fatness it, like encouraging good food I'm a foodie I love food I love to cook and it's just so much more than you know just the sex it's like your whole identity mm. I'm just curious. Um, so like uh, in one of my biggest things as as a fat admirer, as a gainer and all that, I am totally about the belly. I think it's just mm. the fucking hottest part on a guy. Yeah. And like Agreed. when it comes to um, 
worship. Like I, I want to get in there. I want my face in there. I want my hands on it. I want my tongue in there. Like I want all, and I can spend hours doing that. Like, do you, is it a similar thing for you? Yeah. Yeah. Completely. Like, um, I would say I'm fat sexual and I mean that literally, like I'm attracted to fat mainly on the belly, but everywhere, like even more so than genitals. And that's why I'm like, I am definitely not straight. Cause I don't care. You know, I don't care what it is. Um, most of my attention is going to be on the belly anyways, just like playing with it, jiggling it moves also great. Um, chubby legs also great. Um, but I agree like 95% of my attention is on the belly. Mm. Yeah. So I, I feel it. like this is just, yeah, <laughs> it's a common experience. Everyone likes the belly. You're, you're like a, you're like a long lost sister or something. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> just like <laughs> if someone like, oh, the hottest things would be able to pick up their belly and drop it on you. That is oh, yes. ideal yeah. or just like being squashed under it. Um, anything to do with being squashed or dominated. Um, but I would say I'm a switch. I, I like to be crushed and dominated. I also like to, yeah, worship bellies. But then I also do sometimes like being a little bit more of the um, dominant. Like, mm. uh, yeah, like you should try on those old pants um, I gave you, you know, three years ago. Or like, you should definitely fuck me while drinking that milkshake. Like that sort of stuff. Oh. um so a bit of both yeah and and then with it's your... like too hot too hot oh my god I'm so... <laughs> oh. Oh. and then so like when it comes to and um i should just check real quick it, it, i don't want this to be too personal of a question but um <clears throat> so i was just wondering like is it the same thing like with your partner like in your intimate moments is it the same kind of thing where you're focusing your attention mostly on his belly yeah okay definitely <laughs> I mean, he'll ask for TLC elsewhere as well, but my attention is on the belly for mm. sure. Yeah. I mean, what I'm taking away from this, aside from getting a little bit flustered, is we need to do a whole <laughs> episode on on uh, body worship. So uh... yeah, absolutely, I could spend forever just like, and sometimes it's not even it's not even leading to sex. Like sometimes it'll be like we're between work shifts, we're fucking tired, working twelve hour shifts. I'm like half asleep on the couch half feeding him food and jiggling his belly and it's just like it's not leading to anything i'm just like interested mm. in it it's just <laughs> all like the fingers needed somewhere to nestle and like the i needed to stick my hand under somewhere warm <laughs> happened to be the perfect place to put it honestly oh yes yeah we're gonna have to come back to this another time this this is too fabulous now you mentioned before that you know that you're a bit of that nurturing type in that you love to cook and you love to bake um You'd mentioned before as well that, you know, you had some experience with um, disordered eating. And I'm curious to know, like, for you, where does that desire to cook and bake and have that kind of more maternal moment, I guess, where does that come from for you? Yeah, I I think it most, it comes from probably just like the fetism aspect of just like wanting to always have baked goods around the house always wanting to have snacks ready for him definitely like um definitely the caring aspect um of having food always ready um it's also just like fun like I'm an artistic person I like to paint I like to bake sometimes like decorate it that's fun too um but yeah definitely just always having food around calories in um yeah I've always loved to bake He's slowly getting more into cooking, though. He's like, because before he did not really know how to cook. And I was kind of more the cooker. And um, we've traveled to Asia. And now he's in a kick of cooking Asian food. He's big on the Asian food. So I'm like, hell yeah, I love this for you. Cook up all the Asian noodles you want. Absolutely. And also uh, the amount of curries that you can like put butter and ghee. So much, so much coconut right coconut cream coconut cream and everything girly i mean a lot of time vietnamese pho like the use of oil as well Good. flavor like it just listen people i understand you have an expectation that like asian food is going to be healthier because they love a stir fry and they love a veg i promise you if you drown a vegetable in a cheese sauce it is just as calorie filled but also like yes. Tastes fantastic. And it's also not sesame oil tastes amazing. Still yes. oil, but tastes fucking amazing on noodles. Oh my god. Literally, one of the best simple dips you could ever do is like 
and it's just tablespoons. Tablespoon of sesame oil, vinegar, soy, and honey. Boom. So good. It's calories, it's flavor. You could dip fucking anything in that shit. It's gonna taste phenomenal. Um, oh my god, I love good food. I fucking love good food. Um, okay. But do you feel like talking about your upbringing a little bit again we mentioned um you know you'd said about your disordered eating do you feel like aspects of that have influenced your personal approach to feeding and fat admiration yeah I think I think it's just like been a long road of um healing from like mental health issues and also societal fat phobia that's kind of got me to the place I am today um, I did have like kind of an abusive upbringing where I didn't have any control, like a lot of like childhood violence issues. So I think part of the eating disorder is probably trying to gain a sense of control in my life, um, as well as this like societal fat phobia, uh, wanting to be thin, having a thin partner. Um, I was like very not in a good mental place. Um, and then you know, I was going to therapy, went into nursing school. And that's when I really started to heal. Cause I was like, I can't take care of other people if I'm like not well nourished myself. Like I really need to take care of myself. Um, and then on nurse, like during nursing school, I went all through also through quite a journey of like fat acceptance and liberation. And also just like reading lots of studies about like how shitty we treat fat people in our medical system sometimes. Um, so then that was its whole journey and, you know, following a lot of people on Instagram that are like fat positive helped. Um, I think that's initially where my kink for contrast came from partially. And I notice as I get older and I gain weight, I'm like, eh, nah, take it or leave it. Like the contrast was sexy, but I'm also like fine being a bit overweight myself. It's like, I just like the fatness on other people whatever it is um I don't even try to gain weight I just like food so <laughs> <laughs> like a solid 180 but I'm also very muscular so like people can't tell they're like you look like you're 140 and I'm like no no this is like I'm solid um <laughs> well that's a nursing thing as well isn't it because like Tim I mean you have to be kind of sturdy yeah because um, even in even in a hospital where you maybe have more employees than you would in a nursing home, um, you still get heavy people, large people. Sometimes you don't have uh, equipment um, to uh, reposition them in bed or, or, or like if they were to have a fall, you still have to get them up somehow, you know, so you yeah. have to be kind of like, you know, you have to have some yeah. physical strength because you are going to be expected to lift. Yeah. And like, luckily, my whole life, I... Um... I like to lift weights like it's a hobby and it helps me de-stress sometimes I joke to my friends I'm in a perma bulk because like I just love food and I love lifting weights I stress lift and I stress eat and now I'm just perma bulking for life apparently uh, <laughs> love it. Love I have, it. do have a good amount of muscle but hmm. so I'm curious to ask this here because obviously you've mentioned your partner and you mentioned he's, he's going oh, this is a little bit away um can can I probe and ask how, Absolutely. how much has he gained under your care? About a hundred pounds in oh. nine years ish. Oh, wow. So like slow and steady, but like also a lot. Mm. Um, and that was kind of always the goal of like he's like yeah like um, we'll just kind of keep going and we've had the conversation of like you know, if health issues come up, we would like slow down or stop, obviously, because he's not interested in that. I'm not interested in that, at least in real life. Um, So we've talked about that, but he's gone from like, he was, and let me say, he was like lean when we started. He was into bodybuilding and he was like, I could see like eight to 12 abs. <laughs> like, um, but I completely fell in love with this guy. Like, um, he, his sense of humor is hilarious. We have the exact same sense of humor, like the absurdist sense of humor. That's just goofy and wild. Um, and so quick side tangent is for, you know, feeders out there. It's like, I think we always get set on, we have to find a feedy. We have to find a, like a born feedy, but the reality is feedies aren't that common. So if you, um completely fall in love with someone and you you or you're willing to be honest about your kinks I think like not a bad thing um
but yeah, so slow and steady, he went from like cut 180 to like 280. And he's pretty tall. So he's like, it, um, you know, if you look at him, you might, you might see he's athletic from a distance, but once you get close to him, you're like, oh, he has a gut. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what I love hearing about that, I think this is very reflective. We've done a number of dating episodes on the show at this stage. And I think what a lot of people come down to is recognizing that while there is a fantasy of pairing fetism and relationships, the propensity to find that it just isn't there in any kind of notable way. Um, yeah. And understanding that your, your ability to love someone will transcend that. And also mm -hmm. it's kind of the point, like when you're with someone, are you with them because of the fetish or are you with them because you're with them? And that's right. really yeah. core of every relationship and every dynamic. So I, I, I love hearing that it's proof that, you know, love Oh God, I was fully about to, oh, what's that one Disney movie? Love will find a way. No, it's Lion King. I heard it in my head. Uh, anyways. Um, but I, I, I think that's wonderful. And obviously that sense of feeding doesn't come from, well, it's not that it doesn't come from fetish because there's an element of that there, but ultimately his growth, his willingness to participate is rooted in the love and adoration you have for one another. And I think that's really the major takeaway, um, along with the Chinese takeaway, um, <laughs> that it is about that love and affection that leads to a physical manifestation and transformation. And also the point that like, I used to think it was very black or white, like you're into feudism or you're not. And I'm like, 100% into it need to have that element to feel any sort of satisfaction or finish. Um, and I used to think if like, if you didn't want that, you didn't like it at all, but I'm finding there's like a spectrum in the middle. Like he, when he gets super stuffed um, or like, or I'm playing with his belly and I'm like, this is super hot. And then he's like, oh shit, I'm turned on now. Um, so sometimes it turns him on or, and it's like a, a mix of like him turning himself on, but also me being turned on turns him on. So like he is getting enjoyment out of it, which is fantastic. Um, I'm so glad he gets some enjoyment out of it. I'm like, cause I've had a few moments in my relationship where like, you know, you're with a civilian you're like, are you sure I'm not too weird? Are you sure you're good with this? And just, it's important to have commu communicate and check in and make sure they're consenting and if, you know, if there's any issues, talk about it. Um, but he has been a very willing participant. <laughs> Clap. Yeah, honestly, it just, that just makes me so happy. And I, I feel like I make this remark every time we talk about, you know, relationships in the communities, because it's just fucking lovely. You know, I feel like so often the dialogue comes down to this bemoaning and you know sometimes it's actually quite sad like the way that people feel a confliction of you know i would go out with this person but they don't share my kink and i feel so distraught because i feel like i have to give up one thing or the other but the reality is you don't have to owning yeah, yeah. and being communicative with your partner means that you would be surprised just how much you can have and when it comes to fat boys and fat girls we like to have a lot so yeah. it's very, very possible to have a fulfilled relationship. Maybe it does involve that kink. Maybe it doesn't. It's okay. You can negotiate and find out a way that works for you. If it's such yeah. a core tenant to yourself that to not express it would cause you to explode, then that's something you need to talk about. And if that's a deal breaker, yeah. then okay. That's a deal and breaker. And it is like such a big spectrum. Like there's people in this kink who literally like barely engage in real life and it's mostly fiction and then on the other end of the spectrum you have death feeders fully balls to the wall 900 pounds having 10,000 calories a day and they want it all I think unfortunately that extreme aspect is usually what's in mainstream media and that's why everyone gets such a bad name which is so frustrating because the reality is most people in this community find a balance somewhere in the middle and they're like you know, they're not 900 pounds, but you know, everyone has their own risk benefit ratio and what they enjoy. And I think that's the beauty of it is like, you can pick how much you want to engage and how much you want to do. And yeah. 
Like it's we can't tell you how many bad representations we have had to watch because we do a review series uh, and yeah. you know there's a lot of I've like little exposés, like a little expose or a little documentary about something, and it's a, it's a total race to the bottom. Um, it's just the worst representation ever, and then you know it's always framed in such a, a taunting kind of way. You know, yeah. um, there's so few examples of of you know, fat representation where it's just yes, they're fat, they like it, whatever, it's fine, it's not a it's not a big deal. Like, mm -hmm. I think we've only seen what two things, James, that didn't immediately yeah. mock or <laughs> yeah, a, yeah. A tweet. it's so disappointing. It's like, why can't we have a positive representation in the media? It's all just like it's all it's almost always like the women and the the feedy women that say like I want to be 900 pounds and then they make the news and it's like and then people are like oh what these sick freaks and it's like well no I don't even think she's a sick freak she's consentingly doing what she wants with her life and like so is everyone else and like hmm. so stupid when people make comments about like fat people taxing the healthcare system because I'm like honey there's like so many other things that tax the healthcare system more also like do you know how much we waste in medicine? I'm sure medical waste and like unnecessary lab tests are like most of the cost of our healthcare system. <laughs> the amount of the amount of plastic that we go through in, oh in the business I is like, I go and there's no way to recycle plastic. it. I know our hospital, even in Canada, no recycling. Like they're like, That's there's cool. like some food scraps uh, compost in one area, but like they don't recycle any of the, you know, Ivy bags, any of that stuff. Oh, it blows anyway. my mind because it's like you raise the temperature enough you're going to kill anything anyway so what difference does it make just take all yeah. those syringes all the tubes all the things and just and you know it just fucking do something with it because it's probably the majority of what fills landfills at this point yeah yeah it's it's absolutely insane but yeah it's like just let people fat people live you know yeah like let people do you know honestly and i know we make this statement a lot but it's like there is so much going on in the world like if you have enough time energy and attention to be like i'm going to make shit difficult for fat people like it's not just that you're a sad loser it's like you need to really consider like what is going on in your life that you have like excess energy to be this person because i guarantee you there are other areas where you could stand to be nicer and people would appreciate that a hell of a lot <laughs> more now, so people just got too much time on their hands <laughs> ain't that the fucking truth now listen i know we asked you this before well i think we talked about this before like some of the things like the, the most frustrating things you tend to experience it's <clears throat> men bobby um <laughs> but to to flip that i want to ask you what is like the greatest source of joy for you when it comes to all of this what's like that biggest kernel of joy oh that's tough um I feel like just being true to myself and not not living in a lie anymore and I didn't realize how much that was impacting me until I actually got into a relationship where I could be honest with a partner and have them accept it um because I was in a couple previous relationships and was never able to be honest just because I was like I'm gonna be judged they're gonna think this is weird um and sex was just so not enjoyable like for a good while I thought I was asexual um and then I just realized I'm not asexual I just need the fetism or fat aspect um to be there so yeah <laughs> it's um I would say just being able to be with an understanding person and be open with understanding people being myself and actually feeling the full joy instead of pushing it down, pushing it away. I love that. This has been such a wonderful episode. And I've got to tell you, just as an aside here, like we're going to, we're going to need to have you back. Like there is just so many of these questions where I'm just like, uh, my God, honestly, just, pick a state <laughs> you made that's a whole episode in and of itself like we're gonna have to have you back um and we are going to close off with a question in a second but just quickly before that is there anything that because this is your first time your first moment speaking on it is there anything you want to say now before the end of the episode um just that i mean i know you guys are popular within the community i don't think people who don't like look for this will find this but um if you know me um 
just like reach out to me privately uh, if you hear this don't like go to like my employer just talk to me and have an honest conversation because I promise we're not that weird at all um I have I'm Canadian fat sexual on well we're probably gonna close up with this but I'm on the reddit I'm on Phoebe I'm on fantasy theater so as a last question here for today and honestly today has just been fantastic my god cannot wait to have you back already <laughs> um but for people listening who because you are our unicorn you are the the female fat admirer for listeners who maybe this is their first time hearing your perspective hearing this type of stance on different things what is like the biggest takeaway you want people to have from today's conversation um i think similar to like what brings me joy is like i just encourage people to um be honest with themselves about what they enjoy and um be true to yourself don't let like society crush you down until you have to be a certain way um and yeah just uh respect and love fat people alongside your attraction to them <laughs> i love it i love it listen april this has been such a phenomenal episode yeah now where can our listeners find you online um yes so i um you know what I'll say? I'll say I'm Canadian fat sexual on Fantasy Feeder, Phoebe, Reddit. Um, I do have a personal Instagram, so maybe like add me on somewhere else first, Canadian fat sexual, and then if we vibe, you can have my personal Instagram too. I don't have any 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 like fun, exciting feeder Instagrams. Maybe I should make a meme page of good things, but I just have my personal one. Love it. <laughs> Well, listen, that's it for another fantastic week here on Thick Radio. Please remember to like and subscribe, rate us five stars, and leave us a good review. Now, if you liked this episode, the podcast, or just us in general, please share it with your friends and encourage them to tune in. You can find me on Instagram and Blue Sky at Stanham. And you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and TikTok at Thicky Mouse. You can also look us up on Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok at Thick Radio or at our website at podpage.com forward slash thick radio. If you want to submit a voice note or become a financial supporter of the show, you can find the links in the show notes, and you can always write to us at thethickradio at gmail.com. So until next time, bye fats. Bye fats. Bye fats. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Thick Radio is a Patreon and Anchor app podcast produced by Stan and Vicky Mouse. Next and mastered by Stan. Our artwork is provided by Lucky Our theme song is provided by Spotify Cream. Thick Radio.